what to do, where to go, what's happening and when. The spotlight's on fun and excitement all this week from the Lehigh Valley and beyond. So check out your calendar and let's go. Hi, I'm Grover Silcox and welcome to Let's Go. On tonight's episode, we're gonna to go to the Switzerland of America in Carbon County, start up our engines in Allentown and meet a tortoise named Tori in Bucks County. So what do you say we get going? First up, the Barn Nature Center in Doylestown. The Barn Nature Center is a part of the community. It started as an animal therapy program and then it kind of became more of a community center. All of our animals are rescued or rehomed animals. We have over 80 different kinds. Birds, reptiles such as snakes, tortoises, turtles, lizards. We've got guinea pigs, rabbits, chinchillas, hamsters, and we also have fish. Most of the animals, since they were pets at one time, are very friendly with people and children especially. This is Tori. He's our sulcata tortoise. He is about 35 years old and he can live to be over 100. He likes to eat green things. He eats all the hay in here. The best part about him is when kids come to visit us, they get a piece of lettuce and they get to hand feed him that piece of lettuce. These are our three bearded dragons. They're called bearded dragons because they have beards of spikes. When they feel threatened or want to look more impressive, they'll puff them out and it'll turn completely black. So it looks like a big mouth opening up. And so when kids come to the nature center, they get to hold the bearded dragon all by themselves. We have a free flight walk-in aviary with parakeets, cockatiels. Kids can go in and hand feed them millet and the birds will land and they don't bite the kids. They just eat the millet out of their hand. We have here our three ferrets. A really cool thing about ferrets is they have these backbones with extra bones in them that are kind of like slinkies. So they can do things like that. They can fit into any hole as big as their head. As long as their head can fit in that hole, they can squeeze their body through it. And ferrets sleep for 18 hours a day, so these guys are awake now and they're ready to play. This barn was built in 1732, and the whole upper part of the barn is an adventure center. We have several rock climbing walls all around the room, and we also have a high ropes course up in the rafters. For birthday parties, we have a game room up here with pool tables and air hockey and foosball and stuff for kids to play with while they're waiting to go rock climbing. We also do team building up here, so we have a number of challenges for teams to work through together. We're pretty much open to people of any age. We have a senior safari for older people and we have toddler time for five and under children. So really anybody can come and have a great time here. We are by appointment only. Cost does vary based on what activity you're doing. Team building and a guided tour of the nature center are $10. Rock climbing and the high ropes course are a little bit more since it requires our specialized trained staff for those activities. All of our animal ambassadors that live here would love for you kids and all of your family to come and visit us at the Barn Nature Center. It's been called the most amazing model train extravaganza and it's at the Merchant Square Mall in Allentown. So climb aboard, you're in for a treat, train fans. All aboard! Hi, I'm Mike Roach, owner of the Model Train Exhibit at Merchant Square Mall. If you're ready to see some trains, thunder and lightning, and a bunch of rides, let's go. This is one of the largest model train exhibits on the East Coast. The model train exhibit was built six years ago. It took five men two and a half years to build it. 
This is a 10,000 square foot room where we have 40 trains running, 18,000 feet of track. Okay, we're now at the, the largest platform of the three that we have here. Everything that you see in here is to perfect scale. Every person, every car, every building, every tree. Uh, I actually like the, uh, the parachute ride the best. Uh, it's a lot of fun. The kids seem to really enjoy that. Godzilla's a big hit. We have two large carnivals. We have over 1,000 buildings, 30,000 lights. Here we have our underground subway system here. Okay, we're looking at Ski Mountain here. And we've got over 25 ski rides. The kids really enjoy this because this is where we have Thomas the Tank Engine and all of his friends. Uh, during our, our, the Christmas time, we run the Polar Express, which the kids love. Many of the buildings you see here, particularly the taller buildings, the skyscrapers, are all hand-built. They're one of a kind. We have some of the smaller buildings that are kits that you can buy and put together. We have a large 16 foot by 24 foot lake with four inches of water in it. That of course is where we have our thunder and lightning storm. This exhibit is for everybody. If you're a train buff, you'll absolutely love it. If you're not crazy about trains and you just like lights and rides and scenery, you'll love it too. Perhaps the perfect place to throw a birthday party for President George Washington is the place he made famous. In fact, so famous, they named it after him, Washington Crossing Historic Park. Now, the park wants you to come on out and wish the president a happy birthday this weekend. Not only can you wish him a happy birthday, but you can tour the place where he and his men made their historic crossing. Every year for President's Day, in particular General Washington's birthday, we hold a celebration here at Washington Crossing Historic Park. It is geared toward young families, so specifically for families who have young children. And uh, we have a series of demonstrations around the park. Children can experience the blacksmith shop, they can experience quill pen writing, 18th century children's games, hearthside cooking. We have two sections of the park where the Washington Crossing Bridge is currently. That was actually the ferry point. So that's most likely where Washington would have crossed. It's also one of the narrower points of the Delaware River, and he was able to get across with his army of 2,400 men and all of the accoutrement that they needed, their cannon, their artillery, horses, everything, the carts that they needed to take with them for that surprise attack on Trenton. We also manage Bowman's Hill Tower which is a 125-foot observation deck, which is absolutely stunning during the leaf season. And we also manage the Thompson Neely farm and grist mill. The main section of the house is the kitchen. There's a musket in the corner near the door where it would have been kept to if an officer needed to or a soldier needed to race out. Some uniforms are draped over chairs. One of the rooms is interpreted as an officer's headquarters. It's a mix of what a military officer would have been seeing and using, but also how did a family live and manage their business and their family life while boarding these gentlemen. Here on site, the lower section of the park, is the McConkie's Ferry Inn. The inn is interpreted as a tavern. This is the commercial kitchen, a space that would have been where travelers would have waited to cross the Delaware River at the ferry point. It's a very large open hearth, and they would have been using this fireplace to serve meals to guests. The visitor center has a 250-seat auditorium. We also have a, a gallery. The exhibit right now, you, we have two Brown Bess muskets that are part of the Pennsylvania collection, cups and saucers and things that you would have seen in a common soldier's uh, haversack. We also have a, a very extensive furniture collection here chairs, a lot of them from Philadelphia from 1740 through 1790, armoires and, and chests of drawers, several desks. And there's also an exhibit in there on soldiers' health right now. This display is what a sick room would have perhaps looked like. 
If the family was lucky and the soldiers were lucky to have a bed to be on, it would have been a rope bed with a, a straw mattress. And these are some of the tools that surgeons and doctors used in those field hospitals and the hospitals and places where they were caring for the injured. There's all kinds of things going on at the park. Folks who may want to go biking or running or hiking, you can connect both sections of the park by walking on the canal the three miles. We have campgrounds for Boy Scout troops and Girl Scout troops if they are interested in uh, using our Scout campground. But we also have picnic pavilions and we have barbecues and grills so that families can come out and uh, have a picnic lunch when the weather's nice. Virtually every weekend there's always something to do here. Time for a little introduction, folks. Meet reporter Tracy Yatsko, the newest member of our PBS 39 family. Welcome aboard. Choo choo. Oh, you've been watching our Let's Go segments. I have, I love them. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but in this next segment, you really rev things up, right, Trace? I Trace? really did. I took a ride over to the Lehigh Valley Grand Prix in Allentown, and let's just say things went very fast. Ready to race and win. Tear it up. The Lehigh Valley Grand Prix is the adrenaline rush. It's the thrill of going fast, the thrill of being in control. Oh yeah, I'm registered. All right, race ticket. Okay. Follow me to the briefing room. Let's go. The first time here, you come in, you register, you create a profile, and after that, we've got a five minute video that covers all the basics and everything you need to know out there to race. After the video, we get you equipped with a helmet. Oh yeah. Get you seated in that go-kart. The carts are adjustable. You wanna lock me in? Vroom, vroom, vroom. Oh my God. It's a challenging course. You're not gonna come here once and figure it out. You're tearing it up out there. I started this my sophomore year in college, and by the end of senior year, two months after I graduated, we were open for business. We're mostly an indoor racetrack, but we do have other things here as well. We have air hockey, we have pool tables, we also have a mini bowling area. We've got a full bar and kitchen. We call it the trash talk beverage after you get off the track, enjoying a beer with a friend, kind of going through your race results. It's a, it's a lot of fun. We do everything from an eight-year-old's birthday party to a bachelor party, corporate team building programs. And then we do competition programs where we have guys like Marco and Andretti that come participate. We do have a league program as well. So kids ages eight to 15 participate in an eight-week program uh, where they're competitively racing on the track on Saturday mornings. But this weekend, we have the LVGP 500, which is a 500 lap endurance race held on the morning of the Daytona 500. We've got some amazing drivers coming out, such as IndyCar driver Marco Andretti and uh, Corey Lewis, who are local to the area. We're open seven days a week, Monday through Thursday, 11 to 10, Friday and Saturday, 11 to 11, and Sunday from noon to seven. We love what we do. Um, we care about people having a great experience here. Oh my God. And we want people to come in and get that adrenaline rush. So, you know, come on out and enjoy the track. Whew, well, thank goodness you survived your racing debut, Tracy. But I hear you have another adventure for us. I did, so I crashed once into the tires. You did. But this next segment is a little bit safer. Oh. It's at the Da Vinci Science Center in Allentown, and it includes safety goggles and gloves. Oh. Do you like science, animals, or experimenting? Well, if you answered yes, we have a great spot for you to check out this weekend. The Da Vinci Science Center is having a Polar Animals Weekend this Saturday through Monday. We're going to be having the Center for Aquatic uh, Sciences coming in, and they'll be bringing some animal artifacts that you wouldn't necessarily see every day. The next day, we have the Lehigh Valley Zoo coming in, bringing in their African penguin. And then thirdly, we have our really good friends from Arctic Paws Sled Dog Tours, who will be bringing in their huskies. 
Admission is $12.95 and the event times vary throughout the weekend, so check out their website at DaVinciScienceCenter.org. But don't worry, you'll have full access to other exhibits as well, which are really cool. So we have a lot of great exhibits. Anybody who loves science or just loves to play around. One of our, our biggest, uh, most popular ones for our younger kids is Engineers on the Roll. And we have all these balls kind of going on conveyor belts. The kids get to collect the balls and put them in different spots. It's really cool. And when she says kids, she also means adults, like me. We'll be doing experiments at our Inquiry Island. OK, Suzanne. What do we have here? Let's do it. We have a really cool experiment here. It has to do with the polar sciences. So we have a couple of materials here that are pretty cold that we want to compare. OK. What do you think that is? What does that look like to you? It looks like ice. What about this material? What do you think that might be? I have no idea. Uh, would you like in, to, to hold one of these pieces? Absolutely. OK. All right. So you want to look at that. Do you notice anything different about how that's behaving? That looks like it's already melting. Yeah. And this is not. It's not, but it's a solid, right? Mm -hmm. right? And I can feel coolness through the gloves. Yeah. I got to experiment with pouring warm water over ice. So what do you think? Do you think that's what would, is that what you expected to happen? Absolutely. Then we poured water over the coldest material. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. So is that a little bit different? That is so cool. It almost looks like it's boiling, but it's yes. cold. Exactly right. I told you it's cold, but if you were to guess, you would it think looks like it's maybe hot. it's really hot, right? right? Because it looks like it's boiling, and in fact, it is boiling. It really is. Find the scientific answers this weekend at the Da Vinci Science Center Polar Animals Weekend. It's absolutely kid-friendly, family-friendly. Like I said, anybody who loves science or just loves to play and is curious about life, we have lots of great exhibits here for you. Now, Tracy, you showed us how animals live in the Arctic, but now you're going to show us about animals who live more close to home. That's right, Grover. So the Elmwood Park Zoo is celebrating Chinese New Year. Mm. So we're about to meet some animals of the zodiac. <music> Calling all animal lovers. You don't have to wait for warmer weather to go to the zoo. The Elmwood Park Zoo located in Norristown is open all year round. The Elmwood Park Zoo has events throughout the year that feature educational programs as well. This weekend, the Elmwood Park Zoo is celebrating Chinese New Year. We decided to have Chinese New Year here for the Elmwood Park Zoo. Well, they can expect to see um, some craft set up. We do have special dragon masks that are part of the educational aspect of Chinese New Year. In the Chinese culture, the dragon mask symbolizes fortune and prosperity for the new year. We're celebrating it here on February 17th. Once 12.30 hits, our education department comes in with specific animals to go over an educational program. Three animals of the Zodiac will be featured during the educational program. This is Cluck Norris. He is a golden laced Cochin Bantam rooster. And he is one of our educational roosters who will be joining us for the program. This is Monty. He is one of our ball pythons here at the zoo who will also be coming to the educational program. Um, he is about four feet long. He is a male ball python. And when snakes are out in the wild or um, here at the zoo looking for their food, they will actually track them down using their tongue, which they use to sniff out their prey. This is Jack. He is our Flemish giant rabbit. He just turned four on Halloween. The size of Jack is a sight to be seen. He's no ordinary rabbit. He is around 20 pounds. Males of his species can get to be about 20, 25 pounds, which is very large for a rabbit. Pretty cool, right? So he will also be at this year's um, Chinese New Year event, so definitely come out and see him. Anyone any age can come for anybody who wants that educational experience for Chinese New Year. The event is free with admission. <laughs> The zoo itself is just a great experience uh, any day, any time of year. Just coming here with an additional experience just makes it that much better because they get to see animals that they don't see on exhibit on a daily basis.
If you don't have time to go to the Swiss Alps, you can always go to Jim Thorpe in the foothills of the Poconos. Jim Thorpe is celebrating its 2018 Winterfest this weekend. I went there, paid them a little visit to see what's in store. Jim Thorpe, known as the Switzerland of America, celebrates its 26th annual Winterfest President's Day weekend from February 17th to the 18th. I got a jump on the festivities by visiting the historic Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway. Conductor Salmon at a 425, okay to proceed north to Old Penn Haven. All aboard! This is the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway we're at right now, and we give train rides out to all the people all over the world come here. We have a lot of people coming here. And we have different cars. The cars we have here now, they were built in 1931. We also have cars that were built in 1917. You'll get on the train here and we'll board. We'll go up to Lehigh Gorge State Park. We'll go eight miles up and eight miles back. It used to go from New York City to Buffalo, New York, the actual tracks we'll be riding on. It's uh, totally restored. Go ahead on, sir. When you take our trip here, we do have a live narrator on our train. Hey, Bill, can I take a seat? Sure, help yourself. Do you have a ticket? I did. Well, oh, I'm only no, kidding. I'm have a seat. <laughs> Welcome aboard the Lehigh Gorge. And if you have any special things like birthdays or, you know, anniversaries, they'll be glad to announce it on the train to make your trip a little special. I love the way Bill the Conductor yelled, all aboard! Hey, that was fantastic, Bill. Could you teach me how to do it that way? Sure. Will you do it? Sure, no problem. Just okay. make sure you yell loud enough when everybody's on board. On the count of three, we'll do it. You ready? Okay. One, two, three. All, all aboard! aboard! Oh, Very good, you're our that? new conductor. Wow, <laughs> my mom would be so proud. Yes, she would. <laughs> Folks from as far away as New York and Philadelphia travel to Jim Thorpe to go to old time shops like the Ma Chunk Five and Dime. The store has been here for a hundred years. Original wood floors are still here. What stayed the same is we got this core basic uh, variety assortment of everyday household goods at very low prices that uh, when you need like a seam ripper or a hairnet or sewing thread, safety clips, you know, all kinds of things, household items are here. But the fun part of the business is going, we go all over the country to buy merchandise that you just can't find in any other chain stores or usually you can't find what we're buying online. So we carry a big variety of nostalgic toys and we have uh, a lot of unusual items. Lots of quaint restaurants dot the hilly streets of Jim Thorpe. I checked out this one at what used to be the Marion Hose Fire Company, now a bar and eatery. The Marion Hose Bar is located in a newly renovated firehouse in downtown Jim Thorpe, located right next to the Opera House. The building is from 1885, and again, it is the first uh, fire company in Carbon County. I got a mighty powerful thirst. Do you got any uh, root beer back there? I mean, the strong stuff. Grover, we only have real beer here. Why, thank you. We tried very hard to preserve uh, as much of the history and bring to life as much of the history as we could about the building. So there are several interesting photographs on display. During the renovation, we found these hose fittings, which were located in a time capsule underneath our back staircase. The bar has some unique fixtures constructed from firemen's axes, and our bar top is made from a 100-year-old boxcar rail roof. So a lot of things in the bar are there to honor the building and the history of this historic district. We have a selection of craft beers that we source from within 100 miles. We have a really nice selection of soups, salads, sandwiches, and snacks. In addition to the Marion Hose Bar, Jim Thorpe's many other restaurants, shops, and venues will be welcoming visitors for this year's Winterfest. If you hear that train whistle, you'll know you've made it to Jim Thorpe. Have you recently gone on a family trip in or around the greater Lehigh Valley? 
Have you found a hidden gem for a date night or a new location to spend the afternoon? Do you have photos or videos? Well, Let's Go wants to hear from you. Share your videos and or photos, and we may feature them in a future episode. Visit WLVT.org for more information. Well, that's it for this show. I want to thank reporter Tracy Yatsko for joining me this evening. And don't forget to check in next week when we have more fun and amazing things to do on Let's Go. We do Murder Mystery Weekends, which is a big thing based on the Packer family. You're a friend of the family or a family member, and we'll give you a little script that tells you who your friends are, what your secrets are, things like that. You spend the weekend trying to figure out who committed the murder, so you can really kind of transport yourself back in time.